Hi, today I'd like to show you how to write a quick 30 second cue that could be used for a music library or for a TV show like a soap opera for example. I want to show you all the different steps and I want to show my approach to setting up logic to do this type of writing. So the first thing is to decide on the mood of the cue. So let's say I'm going to write something in um, a mysterious slash impeding danger type of mood. That's a classic for uh, TV shows. And also, let's decide on the length. I decided to write a 30 second cue. So the first thing I want to do is to set a marker exactly at 30 seconds. This will give me a clear end point of the cue and will allow me to choose how many bars I will need to write for. So to do so, I'm just going to type right here in my SIMT code 010030. That brings the locator right at 30 seconds. Next, I'm going to insert a new marker. If I press Control Option Apostrophe, that creates a new marker that is not rounded to any bars or bits. I'm going to name it by double clicking on it. And before I move anything, before I change the tempo, I need to make sure that that marker is locked, which means it's locked to SIMT code and not to bars and bits. So to do so, I'm going to open right here my event list, my markers, and the first column where it says L, that's the column that allows me to lock that marker. So I'm going to tap on it and you're going to see a small lock showing up there. And in fact, you're going to see it right there too. Let me change the color of this marker so we can, we can see it better. There it is. So now the marker is locked to SIMT code, which means that if I change the tempo, that marker would be always aligned to my 30 seconds, right? So let's pick a tempo. As I said, I would like to do something in, uh, in mysterious slash impeding danger. And so the tempo should be pretty slow. Could be even slower. And remember that even if you have a slow tempo, you can have a higher rhythmic activity, for example, based on 16 notes, that are, it's going to really push the groove forward. Now that I have the tempo that I would like, it's easy to see how many bars I will need to write the music for. So it's around uh, 10 bars of music, a little bit more than 9 bars. The next thing is to start working in layers. So the, the layering thing is very important because eventually we want to deliver the cue in stems. And having different layers that can work together cohesively, but that can also work as independent elements, is very important for the music editor that will be able to place the cue in a much easier way and will be able to build it or unbuild it <laughs> Uh, depending on the layers and the addition of each layers and that's going to make it very easy for the editor to place the cue which means that your cue will be played more often which eventually will translate in more financial reward for you let's choose the sounds or some basic sounds i always like to have some sort of rhythmic bed that allows me to uh, have the groove uh, be pushed a little bit so in this case, I have another library you, that I use quite often that has some, some nice rhythmic beds. And the library is a storm drum um, that eventually evolved in newer libraries. But I always like to start from something like that that has different elements, is simple, but at the same time allows me to, to build um, the cue easily. So in this case, if I look at my first instrument here, I have different flavors. Different flavors of different uh, percussive bed. And I might 
layer more on top of this but I think this usually is a good start so I'm gonna start with that as a first layer of course I'm gonna name the track I'm gonna just say percussion one and I'm gonna start uh, recording And we'll, we'll work out the ending later with we'll Polish It Up, but at least I have a starting point. Now I have another percussive bed here from the same library. That I'm gonna just bring in and out. I'm gonna uh, start layering it again. So I'm gonna call this percussion two. And here we go. It's just pick the one that is not too busy. Okay, I'm gonna switch between these two. Again, this gives me a nice kind of like higher element in the percussion area. It's a bit more groovy, while this one give me more of a bait. This could be actually a good ending at bar 9. In fact, let's do right that. I'm going to record bar 9 right here. And I'm going to show you a, a trick that I use often, which is not to press record, but to just press play and then play the part. And then as soon as I press stop, I'm going to press shift R and the track has been recorded. So basically, whatever I play, Logic puts it in a buffer. And uh, as long as I don't press play again, the buffer holds everything I played since the last time I pressed the, the, I pressed the space bar. And with Shift R, basically I do a dump of whatever is in the buffer inside Logic. I'm gonna add a second or a third at this point percussion layer. And I'm gonna use the Evolve Mutation. This is a great library for this kind of beds. So I'm gonna again go back to the beginning. And I'm gonna press play. In fact, I'm gonna press record so I have the count off. I'm gonna create a little bit of variation. Now I haven't quantized all this, so let's start looking at quantization. These are really long sustained notes, so I simply select the region, press Q, it's going to quantize it, 16 notes automatically the, based on our subdivision here. I'm going to do the same here, and I'm going to do this one, I'm going to just quantize it in 8 notes just to be more accurate. Press Q. And now let's see it from the top. If I want to start doing some more detailed mixing, I'm going to take advantage of the multiple outputs from contact. So in this case, I'm going to switch the contact instance from just a stereo one to a multi output 16 stereo output. This will simply reload contact with that configuration. And the advantage is that I'll be able to bring each instrument separately into my mixing board. So after converting this instance of contact into a 16 stereo 
output configuration. I'm going to come down here and with the plus button there, I'm going to add multiple outputs. So all these outputs refer back to my instance of contact. And now I will have to simply assign each instrument in contact to a different output. So this one is going to go to output 1, which really means 1 and 2. This I'm going to assign it to output 2, which means really 3 and 4. And this I will assign it to output 3, which is really 5 and 6. I have also set up my output inside contact right here. So now these aux channels will take the output of this. And now I can use my pan and volume and inserts and sands individually on each instrument. Let's hear it. I'm going to pan a little bit this instrument to the left. this slightly to the right when we get to the end. You see now the advantage is, is huge because I have individual control over my individual instrument right here in the mixing board of Logic. If you're a little bit confused how to set up contact for multi-output is actually very simple. Make sure that you have the mixing board open here the outputs and I can just check it up here so you want to have the outputs window checked and with the outputs window open I can simply create more outputs by tapping the plus sign there and when I add an output I can choose the number of channels in this case of course two it's gonna be they're gonna be stereo output and I need to choose how they are connected to the, the internal system. So see here I have two that are not connected. So to do so you simply just tap on the output of each channel and you can configure it depending on how many outputs you have available in your instance of contact. So here I have cre I've created a set of five stereo outputs that will be enough for my tracks here. Again, this is a big advantage when you start mixing. And because usually you write these cues kind of in, you know, in a hurry or um, under a tight deadline, uh, I like to kind of pre-mix it or mix it as close as possible as I'm uh, writing it. Now it's time to add layers regarding the more harmonic part of the cue, right? And so this is really up to you how you want to approach this, but Again, for the sake of, of time, right, and assuming that I need to write these cues fairly quickly, uh, I'm going to go to my trusted alchemy, which is built in in Logic, and I'm going to just put down a bass pad. Okay, I like alchemy because it's a sophisticated synthesizer and the browsing system is, you know, is very, very um, well organized. So I definitely want to look for some pads and uh, you know maybe some evolving pads in the low end sort of like a drone so let's start with that and you can start browsing I mean there are many many patches and you can even go a little bit deeper in terms of filtering so maybe we want to go something that is more orchestral and see what we have here This is not bad, but maybe I want something to be richer. This is too atmospheric. Yeah, here we go. That's 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 more like it. Okay, so here we go. Let's let's see what happens.
okay i will have to end that a little bit earlier right because we are we need to be out at 30 seconds and so, so to do so i'm just gonna open up my piano editor and just gonna trim a little bit the notes here So I know that by this moment here, in fact, let me open the markers here. So by now, by here, I, I, I need to be out, right? So because there's a long release, I'm just gonna try to end it right there. Again, I'm gonna fine tune all this later, but at least now I have a starting point. gonna quantize these two notes here so they start right at the beginning of the cue so we have our first layer now let's add a few more layers I'm gonna um, keep using alchemy for now and so we can do a second pad I'm gonna open up our alchemy and maybe now instead of orchestral we can just um, take a look at everything we have available here and see this can be more like a ear candy type of effect and again I can just put it in here and there That would be an idea. I'm gonna just lower the volume a little bit and just play it a little bit softer. Just kind of testing if this would work. I think it was gonna work. Let's record it. And I'm gonna move register-wise a little bit more in the middle, higher register. Okay, we're getting there. Um, I didn't particularly like the last note I played, so I think it added too much. So I'm gonna just take it out. Now I'm gonna look for a few more elements, um, something a little bit more uh, bass and groovy, so that gives me a little bit of a groove. So again, I'm gonna just go to my trusted alchemy. And we're going to just browse for some bases. Ah, let's try, let's try this one. See how it goes. There we go. Alright, so again, this gives a little bit of motion, it helps to move the, the, the have the movement going, the groove going a little bit. Of course, I need to quantize it, so I'm going to go down here. I can also do it here, but um, here allows me to give a little bit more of a groove, 
and not quantize 100% directly. So I'm going to choose 16 nodes, but maybe I'm going to choose around 80% quantization. Okay, so it seems that it's working. Um, I like to have this base a little bit uh, mellower, still with an impact, but a little bit mellower. At the moment, it's a little bit too upfront. So what I'm going to do is to actually add some um, modulation effects. Again, I'm going to use the built-in logic just for simplicity. I'm going to add an ensemble effect. This liquefies it a little bit. So nice, we're getting there. Now I want a few more layers and one layer that I'm probably into adding. It's some sort of a prepared piano or, or something, some sort of piano, but that doesn't play a traditional piano part. I think I have exactly what I need. The giant. It's a great library. Tons of uh, interesting sonorities. After I load the giant, I can go to the presets and browse here. And the first one I'm going to use is something that gives me a little bit more of a drone but with an edge. So, here we go. Nice. Again, different colors, different ear candies. And actually, I'm going to load another instance of the same plugin. I'm going to choose an element that is higher in register. So again, adds a little bit of a different layer. And here we go. As you can see, each layer is like adding a different spice or herb to your pasta sauce, right? It just adds some color and a different vibe and a different elements that's going to help um, placing the cue in different situations. And the layering system works great because at any given moment, by just taking a couple of elements out, I can easily give the cue a very different vibe. So let's say I'm going to take out my percussion. Let's do it from the mixing board. I'm going to take out, uh, in fact, I'm going to do it from here it's for demonstration. I'm going to take out my two percussion. Right. 
Again, just without the percussion, I get a very different vibe. On the other hand, if I just keep the percussion maybe in the bass, and I take out the other elements, um, this would start sounding very different. So you get the idea of how important it is to have all these different layers because the music editor can really kind of fine tune your cue to different situations. If there is a lot of dialogue, might get something that is more pad-like and less rhythmic active or vice versa if there are not dialogues and there's more like a the scene quite, uh, calls for something a little bit more uh, active, it's going to have more percussive elements. This point I'm going to make sure that all my elements are output to different outputs here. So I need to assign the giant to a separate output. To do so, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to choose my output now to output 4. And my final giant patch, I'm going to assign it to output 5. So now they all show up here. And I can totally rename those outputs, right? So this will be my prep piano 1. This will be my prep piano 2. And those are my three drums, right? I'm going to leave this as instance so I know what it is, but this is my uh, drum drums three. Of course in this type of cues it's nice to add a little bit of river to everything. So I'm gonna just make sure that I have a send that um, sends out to a new bus. I'm gonna choose bus one. Now bus one I'm gonna call it long reverb. And on bus one as effect I'm gonna choose a reverb space designer. I'm gonna choose a pretty big, big hall, big space. So I'm gonna go large spaces. I can even go into some, go some halls, but let's get some big one. Let's say some fine hall. It's a 4.5 seconds reverb. I'm going to make sure that the wet is all the way up because I'm going to use them as a sand. And now um, I'm going to start giving a little bit of reverb to all both my prepared pianos that they already have it, but you know, just going to spice them up a little bit. I'm going to also pan the prepared pianos. It's going to open up the stereo image. And same thing to the pads. The pads are very dry, so I'm going to just give the same uh, reverb. I'm going to have my long reverb on both. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. And I'm going to open up the pad just a little bit as well. Let's hear it. Okay, and that's how you start building it. I mean, of course, you can get a little bit more detailed in terms of effects. Uh, it would be nice to have maybe some delay. In fact, on the piano, the second prepare piano, I'm going to just add a second augs, and this I'm going to call it delay. And I'm going to insert um, it's a stereo delay. And I'm going to just give a little bit of 
delay on the prepare piano. I'm going to choose something that is not so rhythmically precise. I'm going to choose dotted eight and that opens up the stereo piano it opens up this the piano in stereo nicely because the river and sorry the delay is, is actually stereo so the final thing I need to do is just to make sure that uh, at 30 seconds I'm totally out with everything so at the moment with the effects I'm gonna go a little bit over which usually is not exactly what you want. Okay, so in order to make the cue really end at 30 seconds, I'm just adjusting the last bar a little bit. So what I did was to move the last phrase of the bass so that it actually ends on bar eight. And I will have to adjust my pads so that at bar 8 is the actual end of the phrase. So I'm not going to have this unresolved note, but I could have this one actually come in here. And what I can do is just actually to put to re-trigger that note. And then my final ending is gonna be on bar eight and not on bar nine. Because of the long release of all these sounds, uh, it makes more sense. So I'm not gonna, this is gonna. And same thing for my percussion. This is going to be actually on bar eight. And I can do my automation and have a little bit more leeway there. Uh, I don't need this automation. And let's hear it. Okay, I only have the, the delay that I can also automate and fade out. So here you have it. I want to make sure that the delay and the reverb are also out exactly at 30 seconds. I'm going to select these two tracks. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say create track. What that allows me to do is to actually see them in my track list view, which is great because I can do uh, automation. I'm going to actually move them at the bottom so uh, it makes more sense. And when I do automation, I can again just create automation for both of them so that they are really out at 30 seconds I do the same for the delay Just move them a touch earlier. All right, so once I'm done, 
I'm going to create a bounce, right? I'm going to press Command B. I'm going to create a bounce. I'm going to do both PCM and MP3 in case I need to send this to a producer. I'm going to just have also an MP3 version. Um, important to choose the range. I can choose it right here. So I know that uh, 11 is a safe range. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to just say this is a you know, Q1. And then I'm going to start doing stems. That's where things are important here. So to do stems, I can group tracks by type. Uh, so for example, I could have just my my pads. And so I'm going to do Command B, select the same range. And this could be Q1 pads. only then I can have one with just the percussion but I can just solo down here and then I can have only the uh, prepare pianos and bells and whistles type of thing. The last one I'm going to do is just the bass. By the way, good shortcut is to select the area here so when I bounce it I don't have to put the time every time here in the at the end locator you always keep whatever is selected here with the cycle option and this is gonna be just base and so now to the producer I'll be able to give all the different stems including the full mix so they might just use the full mix right away or they might use different stems and combine different stems in order to have the best the best fit of for the music with the image or the the scene or the situations i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you're gonna write some great cues bye